Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In today's episode of STEM Bites, where we tackle seemingly simple questions about science, tech, engineering, and mathematics, we have another question from dun, da, 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 Physics Penguin. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Physics Penguin has a follow-up question. Are you ready? Hey, Jen Foxbot, I'm wondering, does the Higgs boson have anything to do with gravity? Whoa, great follow-up question, and I think maybe you might have been inspired by one of our viewers. Thank you, Physics Penguin, and thank you to the folks that have great questions about topics that we could talk about. Okay, so Higgs boson, gravity, does it have, how do they, how do they smush together, uh, or do they not? Um, okay, so Higgs boson, super cool. It actually was a discovery that reiterated some of the predictions or hypotheses of the standard model. So quick refresher, the standard model is the theory that governs particle physics and all of the teeny, teeny, tiny forces that happen with particles. So we have our electromagnetic force, which is electricity and magnetism. Boop, they're the same force, turns out. Haha, -ha, very cool. We have the weak nuclear force, which deals with radioactivity and particle decay. We have the strong nuclear force, which holds particles together, uh, specifically teeny tiny particles called quarks that are uh, basically that's how the nucleus of an atom is held together. So the Higgs boson um some really smart physicists were taking a look at the weak nuclear force mathematical theory and the electric uh, electromagnetic force mathematical theory and they were like huh these are really similar they're almost identical with one exception the particles that transmit the weak nuclear force have mass so they're very heavy okay okay very heavy mass short distances because they're heavy. They can only go so far before they're like, ah, something like that. <laughs> and the electromagnetic force is transmitted by particles that have no mass at all. So those are called photons and they can go through space and time, just like that singing. No, they don't actually make that sound, um, <laughs> but they don't have mass. And so they can go for much farther distances. Cool, okay. So what, how did, how did, where's the Higgs boson come into play? So physicists like to play around with math, with math equations. And one of the really cool things that we can do with math is let's say you have X plus two equals Y. There's a lot of ways that I can write the same equation. I could add a one on this side as long as I subtracted it from the other side. Oh, sorry, actually it would be the same. Because if I move this over, then I have plus one minus one. Cool. So technically this is the exact same thing. And we can do that with lots of other things. If I say I add a Z to one side, I could add the same amount to the other side. And it's still the same on both sides of the equation. So we can rewrite our equations and manipulate them and do lots of funky things as long as everything on both sides of the equation stays the same. And Higgs got his name attached to it, but a bunch of physicists, I believe there were three groups of folks that won the Nobel Prize for the Higgs boson discovery uh, when it was made by uh, the Large Hadron Collider over in Europe. Yeah, so cool. Um, or CERN. Is that an LHC? Yeah. Um, anyway, okay, so these folks rewrote the electromagnetic theory and the weak nuclear theory, and when they did that, they did a little special thing, I'm kind of I'm simplifying, obviously, but pretty similar to this, just had like a bunch more dimensions. So when they did that, and they rewrote everything, what they found was this new uh, component, this new field that they added, we could think about it as like, I just added this variable called Z. When they did that and they rewrote things, they found that this new field coupled, AKA it uh, acted on or was kind of multiplied against 
the weak nuclear force bosons, and it did not interact with the electromagnetic photons. And so the hypothesis was like, okay, so whatever this thing that we added to the equation is, it's interacting with the particles that transmit the weak force, and it's not interacting with the particles that transmit the electromagnetic force. So there must be something that this field thingy is doing that is causing the weak force particles, uh, bosons, force mediating particles, to have mass. So cool. So the Higgs boson deals with mass. We're not totally sure how it works, just that it does the thing. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with gravity. That said, gravity does deal with mass. So who knows? Maybe at some point we'll tie those connections together. But right now, just conjecture. But the Higgs boson, super cool. Effectively, what it did was say, hey, the weak nuclear force and the electromagnetic force are the same force. So cool. All right, so I hope that clears things up. There is a lot of technical jargon in here. Please let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, and happy to, if there's like topics where you're like, wait, what is a quark or what is a boson? Happy to dig into that because we're at STEM Bytes. So any and all questions are welcome. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.